Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, and welcome to the next chapter of the Mario Party minigame rankings. Today, we are moving on to Mario Party 2, and I'll be honest with you guys, I love Mario Party 2. I will always have a special place in my heart for Mario Party 1 for introducing us to the series that has given us lots of joy, lots of frustration, and lots of chaos. However, it's no secret that the game is a bit rough around the edges, but thankfully, Hudson Soft had some ideas to make the next installment even better. New and more balanced boards, new minigames, an item system, cute costumes the characters would wear around the board. This game came ready to party, and I was all for that when I first saw this game appear in Nintendo Power back in the near tail end of 1999. Fast forward 22 years later, and this game has still managed to not only be my favorite Mario Party game, but also hands down one of my favorite party games of all time. I could spend hours talking about why I love this game so much, but for this video, I should probably only focus on the reason why we are here, ranking the minigames. Mario Party 2 gives us a grand total of 65 minigames, a number that is 15 higher than Mario Party 1's 50. However, some would argue against this statistic because not only does Mario Party 2 introduce some repeats of Mario Party 1's roster, but some would also say that the item and dual minigames don't really count either, since they are board specific and are fairly simple. My counter to this former is that while there are quite a number of repeats, many of the games are improved in some manner, and even for the ones that aren't, we are at least given some new courses or puzzle variations to work with it to at least make them a little different. For the item and dual minigames, while they are board specific, they are still treated as minigames when you purchase them from Woody and can still be played in the free play mode at any point once you unlock them. And that was technically my only requirement for Mario Party 1's list. Because of this, I will be allowing returning minigames, item minigames, and dual minigames in this ranking, along with Driver's Ed, the special unlockable minigame you get after beating everything else in the game. It might seem kind of weird ranking an item and dual minigame alongside a normal end of turn minigame when the stakes are very much different in context, but I try to make my reasoning on a very core and basic level of do I enjoy playing this minigame over this other one? And that question is pretty much how a large percentage of these rankings are determined anyway. And for those wondering about repeats getting the same or similar position as what they did in Mario Party 1, don't worry about it. I judge the minigame based on their individual performance in this game. Just because the top four of my Mario Party 1 list just so happen to be in this game as well, doesn't mean they'll get any of the same positions as last time. I can fully guarantee that actually. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get right to the action. We have a lot more games to get through this time and I don't want this video to be over an hour long, so we better get started. I hope you guys enjoy. Number 65, raking them in. I do not know what happened with this one. You don't have very much control over your rake, and bringing in the mushrooms is not only a pain to time, but also detrimental to your score because if you bring one closer to you, but not inside your basket, one of the other players will likely swipe it. When I have luck-based minigames ranked above this one, that's really saying something. Even if I have gotten better at doing some of the next few games on this list over the years, this is one that I still can't get any sort of enjoyment out of. Number 64, Mecha Marathon. Even though I don't consider myself a bad button masher, I'm not really a fan of button mashing minigames, and for being one of the series first, I wouldn't say this got the category off to a great start. What makes this button masher a bit harder though is the fact that you have to mash two buttons at once, both the A button and the B button. And if you aren't good at hitting two buttons simultaneously, it's going to be really hard to win this minigame. I suppose it's good they made this a button masher though instead of a control stick spinning game, because let's be real, if this was a Mario Party 1 minigame, that's exactly what this one would be. However, it is still not that great of a minigame and one of my least favorites. Number 63, Sneak and Snore. This was my number one ranked minigame when I did my original top 10 worst minigames list for Mario Party 2, and for this list, it looks like it improved by two spots. Only two spots though, because I do still have a problem with this one, and that problem is trying to stop when the Chain Chomp wakes up. I will say, over time I have gotten better at being able to stop in time, but still, 
you really need to ease off that stick instantly if you want to have any success here. Also, pay attention to the Chain Chomp's bubble. When it really starts to bulge, you know that the big guy is about to wake up, which can give you a small window of timing to stop yourself from any prolonged sneaking. Ultimately, still not a great minigame, but I at least prefer this over its even worse redux in Mario Party Superstars. Seriously, how did they make this game even worse? I'll never know. Number 62, Crane Game. Crane Game was already a low candidate in Mario Party 1, and while I do appreciate them fixing the atrocious one-third coin loss of the captured player and turning it into a more simplified 1 vs. 3 minigame, it's still not very fun for the team of three or even the single player. The time clocks give the single player way too much time to succeed, and I'm not too fond of the idea of button mashing wars either when the single player does get their hands on another player. I just consider this one to be quite abysmal, even if it might be improved, kind of. Number 61, Bowser's Big Blast. This is a luck-based minigame, and even though it does feature Bowser's awesome face in the background, I've just never been a fan of having your destiny being placed in the hands of the luck-based gods. And to make this even worse, it's a battle game, meaning that if you do get unlucky and get third or fourth, you will lose coins for playing this game, which honestly sucks. I get this can be exciting in a room full of human players, but it only pains me whenever it's selected, regardless of who I'm playing against. Number 60, Rock Paper Mario. This is a luck-based duel minigame. At least stars won't be on the table in this minigame, but when an entire coin purse could be up for grabs, let's just say I won't be rushing for duels in Bowser Land at any time soon. Number 59, Lava Tile Isle. I'm not sure what it is about this survival game compared to others, but I find this one really hard to control for some reason. It's also not uncommon for the shifting tiles below you to give out and mess up your movement, and even the invincibility frames after getting punched by other players feels really inconsistent. I probably have this lower on the list than it probably should be, but I just really don't like this game that much, even after finding some slightly better success with it over the years. Number 58, Abandoned Ship. Oh, looky here, we have a vertical version of Skateboard Scamper, and it's not very good. It has the same issues of Skateboard Scamper, and if anything, it has even more of them. You can try to get some extra coins here as well, but switching sides on the pole can be kind of finicky, and it's not in inherently obvious where the cheap sheeps are going to jump out either, so it feels like a lot of fumbling around until you reach the end of the game, when it basically comes down to who mashes the button the fastest at just the right time. Number 57, Look Away. I love the music for this game, but that's really about it. I feel like no matter what side you are on in this game, ultimately the fate of the victor is dependent on how much leeway the game decides to give the single player in changing their direction before the timer stops. Number 56, Quick Draw Corks. Even I'm kind of surprised this one ended up so low when really I don't think it's that bad of a dual minigame. Heck, it's pretty much Quick Draw from Kirby's Adventure. The problem I have with it though is simple in that it's a one-shot button press reaction for the win, which could be up for a boatload of coins at your expense if you lose, and even other dual minigames have some safety catch in case you mess up. Not so much here though. Number 55, Bowser Slots. It's a slot machine for an item. Yay. You can time the slots and try to get the item you want, but if you mess up just one input, you don't get anything at all. At least since it's an item game, the stakes won't be high, but it's easily the worst of the category. Number 54, Bumper Balloon Cars. This game is way too quick and way too punishing if you end up having a bad streak of luck with your opposition. The controls of the car can leave you quite vulnerable at times, and feeling vulnerable is not exactly something you want in a battle minigame when your coins are on the line. Try to play this one defensively if you can, and just try to survive until second place, so you can at least get your coins back. Number 53, Shock, Drop, or Roll. This game gives me anxiety as the team of three, because while you do have a jump button to keep yourself sorta of safe from harm, and to keep yourself level, I just always feel like I'm on unsteady grounds here, and I don't really find myself having a good time with this one. 
Plus, the solo player's role is not very exciting, unless you somehow enjoy the screams of agony from the other players. Number 52, Torpedo Targets. I honestly think Torpedo Targets is the worst 2 vs. 2 minigame in Mario Party 2, and it's largely because I don't really like playing either side in this game, whether it's the person controlling the sub or the person shooting the torpedo bullets. Moving the sub is just incredibly awkward, and unless you are lined up perfectly, aiming the torpedo is no picnic either. Not to mention, since the targets randomly move around the arena, it's fairly common for one side to gain an advantage through pure luck. Number 51, move to the music. I actually kind of like this game, but I feel like it's a bit too easy for the team of three. I've memorized phone numbers more complicated than what you could potentially need to memorize here, so it should be an easy victory for the team. Too easy of a victory. Number 50, Hand Car Havoc. It's kind of interesting how taking away the aspect of falling off the course actually makes this game somehow worse than its Mario Party 1 predecessor, but I don't know. I think turning this into a straight up button masher actually kind of ruins it for me. There's still some skill required for how you maneuver around the turns, but I don't know. Most of the time I feel like it just ends up with the better button mashing team on top. Number 49, Speed Hockey. I know this minigame has a lot of fans, but I'm just not one of them. I much prefer the Speed Hockey variant in Mario Party 7 compared to this one. You just have very little control over your character here, and the shell seriously has a mind of its own sometimes. Number 48, Give Me a Break. I find this item minigame incredibly hard to time. I'm not asking for a freebie or anything, but I at least like trying to aim for something, and I swear, sometimes it seems like stopping the train is more random than it appears. At least the stakes are pretty low though, and you can still end up with some item at least. Number 47, Day at the Races. Okay, I know I'm going to get some flack about this one being this much higher than Bowser's Big Blast when they are both essentially luck-based battle games. However, this one is way more exciting to watch, and there is at least some tell to how the racers will perform. It's not entirely accurate, and there is still a luck-based element to it, not to mention the order of how you select the enemies could screw over the person picking last, but overall, I still just enjoy this game a lot more over Bowser's Big Blast and all the other games in between. It's not like this is in the top 10 or anything, it's still back here in 47th place after all. But still, I felt like I needed to explain the larger disparity between the two. Number 46, Archer Rival. I don't think this is a bad game, but I don't think it's a good game either. Plus, it is incredibly in the single player's favor, especially when the Boo, Toad, and Baby Bowser AIs tend to screw over the team of three by locking them out of their own movement. Number 45, Quicksand Cash. The only good thing I can say about this game is that at least it's better than Coin Shower Flower in Mario Party 1. I feel like it's way more balanced for the team of three to get more coins here, and on average, I feel like the gains from this one can be pretty balanced. With that being said though, I wouldn't say this game is too exciting for me personally. To me, it's just kind of an incredibly average coin collectathon. Number 44, Skateboard Scamper. I do think this game is ultimately better than its Mario Party 1 equivalent, but not by much, and I still think there are some problems with it. The course is a lot more interesting, and the coins are placed a lot bit more strategically this time around, but ultimately the ending will come down to whoever is in the lead at the final straightaway. And some of the obstacles, including the shifting floors at the end of the course, can be a bit difficult to overcome efficiently. Number 43, Bumper Balls. Kind of funny how this game still somehow ended up in the same placement as it did in Mario Party 1, but since there are more games to rank this time around, at least we can say that it did improve a little bit. While stalemates are still pretty likely to happen here, and are a big reason why this game is still pretty low, there are three different course variations this time around, and those variations do actually add a little bit of variety and can break some of the problematic stalemates. Still not a top pick for me anymore, but improvement is better than nothing. Number 42, Mallet Go Round. It's not much better than Give Me a Break, but at least it's easier to time and does give you a little more time to aim for something you want if you mess up the first swing. Number 41, Psychic Safari. It's a button masher, but an alternative button masher, which I think are a little more interesting than single button mashers or simultaneous ones. It's... okay. 
Number 40, Saber Slashes. I think my problem with the dual mini games in this game are that some of them are just way too short, and I think some of them, like this one, should have a best to three type of stipulation attached to them. I do prefer this one over Bowser, Western, and Mystery Lands games, but I think the other two are ultimately much better than this one. Number 39, Babam Barrage. I wanted to rank this one a little higher actually, because I do find it fun playing as the single player and trying to avoid the onslaught of bob bombs being tossed at you. But then I remembered how terribly awkward throwing bombs are as the team of three, and then 39th place doesn't seem so out of line. I guess the complicated controls do kind of help the single player not feel as overwhelmed, but then it just kind of makes this game feel more like the team praying for a lucky throw than have any actual skill involved. Number 38, Honeycomb Havoc. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with this game. There is an element of luck to it, which I hate, but there is also an element of using your mind and trying to outsmart your opponents as you figure out the path to your victory. It's not guaranteed, and if you are against human players who know what they are doing, it's gonna be a little harder to get the assured W. But hey, at least this is not a battle or duel minigame, which seem to be a haven for these brutal luck scenarios. Number 37, Grab Bag. Grab Bag may seem a lot lower this time, but while I don't think this game got worse, I just don't think it, this game did much to elevate itself out of the okay to good category either. It decreased the time limit, which was a concern of mine in the first game, and is less punishing to the player currently in first place, and this game being a battle game does honestly make sense. There is a bit of luck factor now though, as one player is randomly given a gold mushroom, which is worth three mushrooms, and I think the game starts to become too much of who gets that mushroom more than anything. It's largely the same game of grab bag though. Number 36, Magnet Carta. I'm not sure what it is about the coin free-for-alls this time, but I just find them to be a little underwhelming in this game. I prefer this over quicksand cash, but I wouldn't say this game is incredibly noteworthy although it definitely rewards the team who can adjust themselves to the controls faster. Number 35, Hot bob -omb. Do I think this game is better than its Mario Party 1 counterpart? Sure. Do I think it's much better though? Mm, not really. It's alright I guess. I suppose changing this to a battle game and giving it more of a 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th place feel to it was a logical change, and forcing the player to actually catch the bob -omb does make it a little less mindless but it will largely come down to players targeting and trying to knock out whoever is currently in first place. That's all I gotta really say about it. Number 34, Dungeon Dash. Hey Desert Dash, good to see you again. Looks like you have a nice new dungeon to play in as well. It's pretty much the same minigame though. Number 33, Looney Lumberjacks. Take Dungeon Dash and pretty much swap the left and right inputs for A and B inputs instead. The team dynamic is a bit more interesting though because you will both be pressing different buttons, but the idea is largely the same. Number 32, Cake Factory. I'm cutting this game a lot more slack than what I did the first time around as this used to be in my bottom 10. However, I've warmed up to it a lot more and against a full set of human players, this can be a very fun and exciting minigame to play. It can be really punishing though if you make mistakes, and making mistakes isn't exactly hard to do in this game, and that's part of the reason why I have it so low before. On a more even playing field though, this game does shine a lot more, and I do think it's a fine 2 versus 2 minigame. Number 31, Coffin Congestion. Easiest item minigame, pretty much a free guarantee of any item you want. Number 30, Hammer Slammer. Better than the previous game because you actually need a bit of skill for this, but not a whole lot of it. Number 29, Roll Out the Barrels. Favorite item minigame in Mario Party 2. It's a fair challenge, but also not too incredibly punishing if you blink because you may still get an item if you lose track of what you want initially. It's quick, it's simple, it's easy, but it's not free. Number 28, Totem Pole Pound. A very basic test of ground pounding swiftness. There's a small element of skill to this game where you need to not only ground pound fast, but also try to make the most of your jump as well, as tiny hops will not pound your totem fast enough. However, once you get the timing, there's not really a lot to this minigame. It's whoever does the most optimal ground pound five times in a row the fastest. Number 27, Toad Bandstand. 
I thought it was interesting that they converted this game from a four player game to a two versus two. Can't really say they made it worse, but I never really thought the new category added much to it either. It's alright. Number 26, Balloon Burst. I thought it was interesting that they converted this game from a four player game to a two versus two. Can't really say they made it worse, but I never really thought the new category added much to it either. It's alright. Wait a second. Number 25, Driver's Ed. I definitely like this minigame way more than Bumper Ball Maze. Some of the courses are still a little silly and awkward to drive through, but it's a fun bonus minigame to play and try to optimize for new records. Number 24, Shy Guy Says. As I alluded to in the last ranking video, I'm not as much of a fan of this Shy Guy Says compared to the one in Mario Party 1, but I'm not going to put this in my top 10 worst list like I did six years ago. With that being said though, it is still taking quite a bit of a hit this time around, dropping 20 places from Mario Party 1's list. I just think the Shy Guy fakeouts are a little more awkward in this game to deal with, and although you can use the Lakitu's speed in determining where exactly you need to raise your flag, I think I ultimately would just prefer the same system as the original game. Just my personal preference more than anything though. Number 23, Tile Driver. You guys know I love these types of games. Admittedly, this one is a bit too simple, but it still works for what it is, and it can be kind of fun trying to route in the quickest path through each solution, and trying to optimize on each ground pound. Number 22, Dizzy Dancing. I like to consider this game a sequel to Musical Mushroom from Mario Party 1, and I honestly kind of prefer it to Musical Mushroom too. Its only problem is that it's a bit too short and will only last around 5 seconds, but it can be fun trying to figure out the dizzying controls and making it to the musical note first. Number 21, Mushroom Brew. Here we have a dual game that takes longer than 10 seconds and is easily one of the best ones at that. I feel like this is a nice test of reflexes, speed, and accuracy, and when you and your opponent do actually manage to pull out a tie, it can be kind of fun finding out who was just that small bit faster at putting in the correct button inputs. Number 20, Time Bomb. Even though I gave some of the other dual minigames a bit of a hard time for being too much of a one chance scenario, I've always been a fan of challenges that require you to stop the timer closest to a set time limit. And this is the very first Mario Party minigame to do just that. Yeah, very costly if you lose because it is a dual minigame, but it is my favorite dual minigame in Mario Party 2. Number 19, Rainbow Run. This is basically tightrope treachery from Mario Party 1, and I already admitted that I have started growing more of an appreciation for that game in the previous ranking video. This version of the game does attempt to make the team of three a little more simplistic, and I think that it works. The team only has to worry about aiming and shooting, and that's probably for the best even though I stand by not having as much of an issue with Tightrope Treachery's movement anymore. Pretty solid 1 vs 3 minigame, even more so now that they actually improved on it a bit. Number 18, Deep Sea Salvage. I see this game as an improvement and upgrade to Mario Party 1's Treasure Divers, and once again, I think the game pretty much succeeded in that department. The movement of the submarine feels very fluid, there's plenty of time to grab coins even if you miss some at the very beginning, Easily the best coin free-for-all in Mario Party 2. Number 17, Crazy Cutter. This is really no different than its Mario Party 1 equivalent, but I do feel like they improved the grading rubric this time around, and they added some more unique patterns this time as well. Number 16, Bombs Away. This is the same awesome minigame as it was in Mario Party 1, but with the added inclusion of more bombs and different types of ammunition, which makes the game a little more interesting this time around. I wouldn't say it makes it that much better, but it was already a solid minigame to begin with. Number 15, Slot Car Derby. I told you guys before, I like this minigame and I'm always down for more of it. They didn't really change much except for the addition of some new courses this time though, but I'm more than fine with that. The courses are also on average a bit longer too, so that does also give the players more time to catch up if they spin out, which is always a good thing. Number 14, Bowl Over. This was another Mario Party 1 vs 3 minigame that was slightly changed mechanically to fit more of a 1 vs 3 style as opposed to the one player just winning something over the other players. And I do like this change. The one player gets an additional throw and they have to knock over all players to win, otherwise the team of 3 wins. 
Although it's definitely more likely for the single player to win if they knock over two players in the first throw, it's not unheard of for the team of three to split up enough to give themselves a chance as well, so I feel like it's pretty balanced all things considered. Number 13, Lights Out. I had this game pretty close to the top last time I ranked Mario Party 2, and although some of the Mario Party 1 repeats knocked it out of the top 10, I am still quite fond of this one, and I think it's a pretty balanced 1 vs 3 minigame, something that's kind of rare back in these days. I do think the solo player has a bit of an advantage here, but it's definitely not impossible to see victory from the team on this one, as the blackout can be both helpful and a hindering to the solo player in certain circumstances. It's all about that movement and how you navigate around the arena, something I think this minigame does pretty well despite it being in only the second Mario Party game. Number 12, Toad in the Box. This game is a test of timing, but kind of a fun one at that. It does feel a bit luck based at the end when trying to get the final box solved, but as long as you get all the other ones, you should still have at least a decent chance of victory, and the anticipation at the end can be kind of fun and exciting. Number 11. We've had racing games. We've had puzzle games. We've had survival to the bitter end games. But Mario Party 2 introduces us to perhaps the most intense minigame that you will ever play. Accounting minigame. That's right. Roll Call gets number 11. Yeah, so all you have to do is count how many different characters are in the field while also trying not to get tripped up by any visual tricks or, in the case of the bob -omb variant, decreasing your count whenever a bomb explodes. Maybe it's not as exciting as I let on, but I think it works as a solid minigame concept, and it can have multiple winners as well, which I do appreciate. You can also try to trick people by having a different number showing towards the end and changing it to the right answer at the last second to throw people off or make them doubt their own answer, which is kind of a strategic play and can counter cheating as well. It's a pretty solid minigame, doesn't quite make it in the top 10, but is a very, very, very solid minigame that I did want to highlight this time around. Number 10, Destruction Duet. This was one of the first Mario Party 2 minigames I ever saw, and I was honestly pretty excited to see how this one would ultimately play out, because two teams competing against the other to destroy a statue did seem like a pretty interesting minigame concept. Although I wouldn't say it's as well developed as future minigames will be of this archetype, for the first, I think it works pretty well and laid down some solid groundwork. There's also an interesting layer of strategy to this one in terms of your attacking options, where you can just try to go ham on the statue with your partner trying to destroy it quickly, or you can spend an extra second or two getting on top of the statue to use more destructive ground pounds. I personally prefer jump kicks myself, but the extra options are there, and they do give this minigame a little bit of a unique variety. Number 9, Bobsled Run. Get ready to see a couple of entries like this as the next few minigames we have are returning games that don't really change much but were already solid additions in Mario Party 1, and they pretty much remain the same here. Bobsled Run does get a new course, and the penguin design of the bobsled is pretty cute, but I don't have much to say beyond that. It's still a great minigame and remains in the top 10. And no, it's not because the penguins have butthole. Number 8, Hexagon Heat. This is just mushroom mix-up, but with metallic platforms and lava instead of mushrooms and water. I kind of prefer the Mario Party 1 setting personally, but as a minigame, this one is still very solid, and it doesn't really change that much. Number 7, Tipsy Tourney. Probably the game that changes the least from Mario Party 1 to 2, but I already thought it was great and still think that way here. It does get a bit of a drop though from its former number 2 status, but it is still in the top 10. Number 6, Facelift. Facelift doesn't quite defend its title here, but it's still one of my top 10 favorites in Mario Party 2. Overall, I think it does get better with the inclusion of 6 unique faces to mess around with, and I honestly don't hate that it's a battle game either, as it does challenge accuracy as a skill. But I wish some of the faces could be... edited more. In fact, for Peach's face, you can only edit the hair for some reason. I still love the minigame, but it's definitely not the best minigame this time around. Just my opinion. Number 5, Platform Peril. This game actually came to play this time around, and I'm glad that it did, because this is really quite the improvement. The original Platform Peril was fine, after all it was still in my top 10, but it was pretty bare bones for the most part, and the sequel actually managed to give it a bit more variety, 
and more things to look out for in the form of its obstacles. We have smaller platforms, conveyor belts, more coins to pick up, and even with these new additions, it still stays relatively true to its original design and still feels pretty good to play. If you love the original platform peril, you will love this version, and if you thought the original was too boring, maybe this one will at least please you a bit more. Number 4, Shellshocked. The first time I ranked Mario Party 2, I actually had this as my number 1, and as you can see, that is no longer the case here. Here's the deal with this game. I still really love it, and I really really like the idea behind it, and if it only had Course 3 as a variation to pick, I could probably still get behind this being my number 1 pick. However, Courses 1 and 2 exist, and I really don't think they do this minigame justice, because your fate can come down to whether or not the players on your right and left decide to double team you or not, and that really really sucks when they do. Getting double targeted early on will likely prevent you from being able to get a win, since you will probably take damage and one player will remain unscathed from the chaos, so even if you do manage to escape and outmaneuver the other two players, you still have a full health player to deal with when you only have a single hit left and that's not very balanced. Course 3 at least mitigates that problem a bit as you have to navigate around pipes and rely more on lob shots, which definitely feels less stressful and makes the minigame more enjoyable. However, this time I couldn't overlook its flaws that this game does have. It's still a top 5 minigame and one of the best new minigames in Mario Party 2, but I'm not going to rank it number 1 this time. It's still a really really good game, I still enjoy playing it, I just wish courses 1 and 2 had more pipes that you could use to cover yourself with. That's all I'm saying. Number 3. Earlier I mentioned Lights Out feeling pretty balanced as a 1 vs 3 minigame, at least for me anyway. However, there is another 1 vs 3 minigame in Mario Party 2 that is just as, if not even more balanced, and that game is perhaps the cutest minigame in Mario Party 2. Filet Relay. In this game, one player tries to carry a fish to some hungry penguins at the end of the course, while the team of three have to not only do the same, but also need to pass it off to different players throughout the run. The solo player does move a bit slower as they have a much larger fish to carry with them, but since the team of three have to pass off their meal at every checkpoint, that will give the solo player enough time to catch up and potentially overtake them. The solo player also seems to be a bit sturdier as well, as their percentage of slipping and falling on their butt is also smaller. But yeah, I like how this minigame is set up, and how it feels like both sides have a very even chance of overtaking the other, and I honestly couldn't really say who has the advantage here. I guess I would slightly give it to the team, as their passing animation could mess up the single player, but if you know that it's coming, it shouldn't be too much of a concern. Plus, you also have to put your faith in your teammates as well. It seriously feels like every con has a pro, and every pro has a con. It also has penguins, and penguins are just so freaking cute. Number 2. My number 2 pick is everything my number 52 pick should have been. Because for this list, I'm giving second place to Sky Pilots. I think with all things considered, Sky Pilots is a fantastic 2 vs 2 minigame. Both players on both teams pilot a flying machine, each teammate is given a specific role for their vehicle, and you both must work together to achieve victory, a perfect synopsis for what a 2 vs 2 minigame should be. For this particular game, one person controls the steering and the other controls the wing speed, and I honestly feel like both roles don't require a whole lot of thinking. The one in front just needs to focus on hitting the boosts and doing sharp turns or nose dives around the obstacles and projectiles, and the one in back just needs to move the control stick up and down in a steady rhythm, and not even in a super fast button mashy way either. It just feels very fluid, it's the perfect length for a quick little race against the other team that doesn't feel too short either, and is just so much better executed than torpedo targets. Very nicely done Mario Party 2, you created a really solid team minigame. Number 1. We all knew Facelift was my number one minigame in Mario Party 1, however, the funny thing is, my favorite minigame in Mario Party 2 is also a Mario Party 1 minigame, and not even a minigame that was in the top 10. And I honestly didn't even say much about this minigame in my previous ranking video either. Let's just break it down though and discuss my reasoning for this. My favorite minigame in Mario Party 2 is Hot Rope Jump. 
What exactly does Hot Rope Jump do to make itself not only different, but just so much better in this game compared to its Mario Party 1 equivalent? Honestly, it doesn't do too much aside from just removing the 20 jump limit and turning it from an easy 10 coin win for all players into a heated, literally and figuratively, endurance match where the winner takes all, and that's kind of cool. It can be a lot of fun testing your skill against other players on not just skill and reflexes, but also fortitude and power of will as the jump counter continues increasing. I think what ultimately got me to see the hype of this minigame was PAX East 2014, when I was in an incredibly tight matchup of this game with another player that lasted for over 200 jumps. Shout out to Scottman895 for that by the way. Not only were my palms sweaty, but everyone who was watching that minigame was going wild with how long it was going. But me and my opponent just kept up our concentration and played the match until the very end. I really wish that match was actually recorded by the way, but regardless, it did stick with me and it was probably one of the most intense minigame matches I've ever had in a Mario Party game that felt super rewarding and likely would have still felt rewarding even if I lost because I knew I put up a valiant effort. Just goes to show you, many games like this can be super deep and fun to play, even if they are just as simple as pressing only a single button at a single specific time until it ends. And that's why Hot Rope Jump is my favorite minigame in Mario Party 2. Well guys, I think that will do it for my Mario Party 2 list. That was a lot of fun to put together and it was just as difficult to rank as Mario Party 1 for many of the same reasons. Heck, if anything, it was even harder when you add in not only more minigames, but also different variations that affect different things. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Mario Party 3's list will turn out, as my opinion on the game has shifted quite a bit since my last time ranking it, and I see the game in a much more positive light these days, as opposed to 2016. These lists do take a while to make, so I have to ask that you remain patient with me as I work on the next one and you will likely not see the finished product until sometime in March 2022. I tried and didn't manage to get this video out there a bit earlier than I was initially anticipating, but only in the interest of giving me some more time to work on some other projects I've been working on as well, and of course staying up to date on my normal Let's Plays and stream events. Speaking of which, like I said last time, if you would like to see more Mario Party content from yours truly, every Friday afternoon at 2pm Eastern, I play Mario Party on my Twitch channel for an event called Thank God It's Mario Party Friday. Every Friday I play through a board of Mario Party and sometimes I even work on minigame tier lists that will ultimately become these ranking videos. Although the ranking is purely my opinion, I do like to hear thoughts and ideas from you guys as well in my initial rankings, as that does give me additional things to think about when I rank the minigames for these eventual videos. Thanks again to everyone for watching, and I will see you guys next time for Mario Party 3. Later folks, and always remember to party on.